Hey everyone, welcome to Brad's Gadgets. If you're watching this video, most likely it's because you wanted to come and learn about the Pit Boss Ultimate Liftoff 4 burner griddle. And I'm going to go into the good, the bad, and the ugly with it. So as you can see, I've got the Pit Boss Ultimate griddle with the four burners. Obviously we have four control knobs. I think what I'll do is I'll go over the features of them first. I can show you everything that you're getting with these griddles. First off, I just want to tell you that A, I've got nothing to do with Pit Boss whatsoever. I'm a consumer. I bought this with my own money. Second of all, I've comparison shopped. I compared all the features between the top brands, the Pit Boss, the Traeger, the Master Chef and the Camp Chef, and there was a few others that I didn't really spend too much time looking at. But I compared all the features, and in the end, I ended up spending my own money on this one here. And I'm about to show you why. All right, so feature wise, <clears throat> I'm just going to work from the left to the right. Uh, first of all, we have two side shelves, and they both fold down. On each side of these shelves, they fold straight down. This one on this side doesn't really fold down while there's a propane tank. Okay, Let's see it just kind of sits there. So why have it fold down? And the best reason I can come up with is that once you remove the tank, uh, if you were transporting this anywhere, you could have the shelves folded down. It's a little easier for transport. With that being said, you can, you can move the tank a little bit. It's on its holder right now but you could put it down and maybe get it out of the way. It won't really fit underneath though. Uh, and the line, the line that goes from the tank to the burners is pretty short. It, it, you don't have very much room to play with that. On each shelf, we have three utensil hangers. Uh, over here, we've got a paper towel holder, which I would totally recommend using the blue paper towels. Uh, as you can see, they don't really unravel in the wind as much as regular paper towels but that's for later on uh, right here we have a bottle opener so if you want a beer you don't have to look for a bottle opener it's right there uh, here we have our grease trap and that's where we'll put all our collection it will funnel down here into the trap and then we can empty it out we've got the lid right here which you can open and close and you can have it closed while cooking and i'll show you that a little later on obviously we have our four burners one igniter with a battery takes an AA battery on this side you get the tank cozy so it's a pit boss and uh, if you have an old rusty tank uh, this will kind of cover that up and make it look a little nicer on each side of the griddle we've got locking tabs and when you unlock these tabs, you can lift the whole top portion off and take it with you tailgating somewhere. the four burner it is very 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 heavy so if I had to give you a recommendation if you're moving this thing take the ceramic griddle top off first because okay. that's where the weight is it's 41 kilograms on the ceramic non-stick griddle top surface we have 647 square inches of cooking space and it's also capable of doing 46,000 BTUs okay now for the measurements uh, the curtain surface we have 35.5 inches wide and 18 inches front to back. The rear ridge stands about two inches high with the front ridge being half an inch high. The side shelves measure 17 and three quarters of an inch front to back and 11 and a quarter inches wide. From the ground to the bottom of the shelf, we have 26 and three quarters of an inch. And from the ground to the bottom of the cooktop, we have 34 inches. 
From the side shelf to the bottom of the cooktop is about six inches. And you see there's a little bit of a gap there between the uh, base and the griddle plate itself. And that's where the heat comes out. So you're gonna have some heat escaping and that lower shelf keeps everything cool. So those water bottles won't heat up or anything. From the bottom shelf to the middle support, we got nine inches and you can store something small under there. So these griddles, you can get them in a two burner, three burner, four burner, and a five burner. And the five burner and the four burner, obviously there's one burner difference, but the cook surface is the same size on the four or five burner. So you just have an extra burner in there. And it comes with a nicer cabinet and stuff, but for me, I didn't feel it was worth the money, the extra amount of money. Um, when you're cooking, you're gonna mostly cook on low, medium, low. So the extra burner to me wasn't really worth it because I'm not gonna bring those temps really that high. Uh, this is big enough to do a family of smash burgers and it's more than enough for what I would use. So everybody has to figure out their own situation and which griddle would be better for them. However, I'm gonna focus on the four burner today. So you see that this thing is a little bit dirty. I've left it outside. Uh, some of the stickers are a little bit faded, but I bought it back in February and it's currently June. So I wanted to give it its fair share of use before I came to tell you everything that I've figured out about these. So I got a little bit out of some YouTube videos here, there, all over the place. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna just kind of come together and put my collective knowledge of all these videos and what I've learned myself into one, one big video for you. The knobs are big and bold and they, they've got a good grip to them and they're easy to turn. And it's also easy to see where they're set on your dial here. With the bottom being low and about 90 degrees of that being high. With 100 degree, 80 degrees facing upwards is off. When you're lighting this grill, what you want to do is you want to turn the first one to the ignite, hit the igniter. Second one, ignite, hit the igniter. Third one, igniter. Fourth one, igniter. Why would you want to do that? If you turn them all on at the same time, and maybe you get distracted for even a few seconds, Maybe you forget to hit the button. When you do hit this button, you're gonna have a buildup of propane underneath this griddle top, and you could get a, a whoosh of flames shooting out the sides. Uh, you do have a little bit more extra time with it, but I'm just saying be careful. Uh, it's just easier to turn one on at a time than to risk getting a bit of a, not an explosion, but a, a flare up of flames, right? So the Pit Boss griddles are made by Danson, and Danson also makes Louisiana grills. They also make pellet grills, griddles, uh, egg, charcoal egg uh, kettles. Um, and my experience so far with them with the customer service has actually been pretty good. Now these come with a two year warranty, so I'm not too worried about it. Just when you get your griddle, make sure you register it right away. On the side here, we've got a trash bag holder. Okay, just gonna put that in there like that. And then we can just lift this in here. Okay. And there we go, we got a nice little trash bag there. However, you can't really, you can't really close it with the bag there. It's just gonna rip it. But while you're out here cooking, yeah, it's a great little added feature. So you can see on the right hand side here, we have these big wheels. They're, they're really nice. They're beefy. And on the left-hand side here, we have the casters that'll turn. Uh, they've got locks. So if you want it locked in place, all you have to do is step down on a little pedal and flip it up if you want to move it. Uh, you can see I've got two finger grip and we're moving it back and forth with a full tank of propane on it. So they move really well, really easy. So if you're bringing it in and out of a garage, uh, you're not gonna have a hard time moving this at all. So I want to talk a little bit about the utensils. These do not come with any of the griddles. You have to buy these separately. They're made out of a nylon polymer. In my last video on the three burner, I said they were silicone and uh, I was corrected. They are nylon polymer. Now you can see that they do have a little bit of a bend to them, a little bit of a flex, but they do work 
relatively well. In the forums and Facebook groups, there's two really good Facebook groups for the Pit Boss Ultimate Griddles. Um, there's debate on whether or not you can use metal utensils on the nonstick cooking surface, or if you're supposed to stay with the nylon polymer. Uh, I've heard you can, I've heard you can't, I watched YouTube videos that say you can, you can't. Um, I just went with the recommended ones from Pit Boss, uh, the ones for it, as far as I know. So I'm not going to tempt fate, I'm just going to use the actual Pit Boss nylon polymer utensils. They are hard to come by though. Um, I bought these right off of the Pit Boss Canada website. Uh, they do go out of stock quite often. There's not very many stores that actually carry them. Uh, I got a set for my three burner up in uh, Peterborough at a barbecue store. And it was the only one in the area that I've seen carry these things actually in stock on a shelf. So uh, Pit Boss, if you're listening, if you're watching this, uh, it would be great to make these more available for people. The three burner you can actually buy at our Canadian Tire, it's called, and that's uh, the American equivalent would be Ace Hardware, um, but they don't sell the utensils there. So again, they're just, they're not that rare, but they're just not easy to buy everywhere. Now when I did buy this, I was expecting it to come with lighted bezels, because that's what I saw on the videos and on YouTube. Uh, however, as I've done a little bit more research on it, uh, it looks like it's only the five burner from the USA that has the lighted bezels, and that's these blue uh, areas here of the knobs and that they would light up. So that was my own fault for expecting it to come because I saw these, I saw it on the videos and uh, it doesn't, at least in Canada. Okay. So why don't I go over the pros and cons of this griddle? Uh, I'm gonna start off, obviously the pros are you can lift it off, you can tailgate with it, you can, it is super easy to clean after you're done cooking. You don't have to oil it, you don't have to season it, okay? Um, cleanup is a breeze and I'll show you that shortly. So the cons, the cons I want to go over really quick. Um, paper towel holder, it's great little added feature. I probably won't use it that much. Um, I think it could be a little bit better. It is just basically a stick, but at least it is somewhere to put your paper towels. Uh, finger holds. When you're lifting this off, the you undo the latches and there's two hand holds right here. Okay. And <clears throat> with that, you can see that where my fingers go in, right? They, they don't go in deep enough. Okay. If you can see that really well. Okay. And when you're lifting it, you're really just lifting it by your fingertips. So this could be deeper. As well, the handholds I think should be back a little bit farther. The reason for that is that the back lip here is about two inches where the front lip is only uh, half an inch. So I think with this extra weight back there, as soon as we pick it up where it, where the handle is currently located, the whole thing wants to tip backwards because there's that extra weight back here. So I think that this handle should be moved back just a little bit to help offset that counterweight. Okay, the next thing I've got here is the latches. And if you don't have a cover, okay, I'm gonna show you this. If you don't have a cover for these, you can see here that the water sits right here and it's starting to rust. So I'm going to have to clean this one up a little bit. And uh, otherwise I'm going to have to maybe use that warranty. And that's like that on both sides of mine. So you might want to consider getting the optional cover for it. Okay, so I did notice that the corner here of my trash bag holder is starting to rust a little bit. And I've noticed the same kind of rust on the bottom side of the handle. So this is again, only after about close to five months of use being uncovered outside. One of the other things is that when it gets shipped to you, it comes on a pallet, okay? And this bottom shelf, you can hear how tinny it is. That's 
on the bottom of the whole package. So when mine came, it was all bent and twisted. Now, customer service said that they were gonna send me out another one, uh, but that's been February and I haven't seen it ship out yet. It's now June. Not the biggest deal to me. I ended up bending it back and the, the folds, the, the creases are on the back edge there. So without that though, you can't really build the base. Speaking of building the base, uh, it took me and my daughter about, about an hour to put this base together. But the good part is that everything from here up, with the exception of the handle, is built for you and it comes already complete. So you don't have to worry about um, putting the burners together or the knobs. It, it, it all comes pre-assembled. So that's really nice. You can spend more time cooking than building. Uh, my lid, for whatever reason, my lid has seemed to have warped a little bit. And I'm not really sure why, but let's show you here. You can see there's a bit of a gap there and here. And when I pick it up and I look at it on the back, you can see that one end is lower than the other. Okay, I'm not sure you can see that from this video, but it's not really affecting much of the performance because as soon as I put it down, it kind of goes back to flat. Uh, if I need to, I will contact customer service about this okay but the good thing is that when you're making smash burgers or philly cheesesteaks or anything like that you can spray a little bit of water on here it'll steam up and you just close the lid and that steam will circulate and it will just heat up and melt your cheese so you don't need a separate dome or any other special utensils or cooking tools like that, your lid kind of does it. When you first get it, you want to do a burn off just to get rid of the oils, lift them up off the top, and then afterwards you're just going to wipe it down with a soapy water and uh, paper towels. In order to do that, you're going to turn your first burner on, ignite, second burner, ignite, third burner, ignite, fourth burner, ignite, and keep it on high. You're going to let it run for about 15 to 20 minutes, and that'll just lift off any of the oils on the surface from the manufacturing process. You'll see a little bit of smoke coming off, but it's very, very minimal. So you might not even see any. Once it's done, you just turn them all off, let it cool down a little bit, and then wipe it with a cloth with soapy water. Then I'll give it a nice rinse with just regular water. When you're done your cook, okay, so cleaning. After every cook, I clean the top and it only takes, you know, two minutes. So what I'll do is I'll put on some soapy water. I'll use the scraper. This is the scraper, the scraper tool. And I'll lift off anything that's remaining there. Okay. Some things stick a little bit, but it, it, this will get it right off. Not a big deal. Uh, so I will go to the b-roll footage on this and scrape it into the collection tray now if I can give you a little bit of a tip on that go eat your dinner when you're done cooking go eat your dinner come back and do the cleaning by that time it's cooled down enough that you can safely clean it if you try to clean it directly after your cook it's gonna be really hot and you can burn your fingertips a little bit um, especially after a smash burger because a smash burgers you're looking at temperatures around 420 to 450 degrees and that's a that's way too hot to be cleaning this grill okay. the other reason that i say that is we don't know on the longevity yet if you put something cold on top of this when it's super hot if it would produce any warping or anything right uh, these are pretty new uh, I think they're about a year, year and a half old since they hit the market. Um, the griddle top cook is just, it's really, really robust. So I really don't see it warping, but I'd rather not tempt fate on it. Plus, like I said, there's no point, no point doing it when it's super hot. You don't want to burn yourself. Because okay? all these little edges too are super hot. So by the time you're done eating, you're going to come back and it'll be still warm enough to clean it, but not hot enough to really hurt you. I wouldn't put my hand directly on the griddle top though. Yeah. So 
So, as a cleaning procedure, I've already scraped off any food that was kind of stuck there. Uh, not much does stick to this, but sometimes smash burgers well a little bit. Uh, I'll put a soapy water mix on, and I'll put a soapy water mix onto the griddle top itself, and then I'll use the scraper to guide it all down to the drain hole. <clears throat> then I will repeat the exact same thing, but now with just clean water, just to get any of that soap off. And last but not least, I will grab some paper towels and just kind of give it a give it a wipe. And you're gonna see afterwards it's pretty much like brand new. It, it really is super easy to clean. And that's it. I just leave it and then I'll come for the next cook. So you don't have to season it, you don't have to you know work hard scrubbing it. it it's really that simple to clean up after you're done cooking. All right, so what does it look like? Underneath, we're gonna turn on one, we're gonna ignite. Turn on the second one, ignite. Third one, ignite. Fourth one, ignite, okay? So this is what's going on underneath your non-stick griddle top. Here, let's turn those off. Okay. Now it's a little dirty under that because I kind of gave it a wash, but that's not really important. Okay. So you can see the collection spout here. When we bring everything down, it's gonna go there into the little collection tray, okay? Now, underneath your griddle top, there are little adjusters, and that will allow you to raise and lower this surface a little bit, okay? Same with your wheels here. Your caster wheels, uh, there's screws under them, much like, a, much like a fridge, so you can help level out your griddle. So what are my final thoughts on the Pit Boss 4 burner ultimate non-stick lift-off griddle. Well, first of all, that's a mouthful. Obviously, I spent my money on it, okay? So I've checked the competition. Uh, it seemed to be the most robust, uh, less maintenance, and it has been just awesome to cook on. It, it really is. Uh, I have cooked on Blackstones before, and I really don't see much of a difference. You can get a nice Mylard reaction on your smash burgers with the ceramic top. Uh, with the griddle plate covering over top of your burners, you're not really getting much water on there or anything for it to rust out. So I spent a lot more money on hardware store barbecues, okay, that do rust out or the burners go after a couple years and then you have to buy burners. Um, so for the money, I think this is money well spent. Uh, in fact, I did buy a three burner to go to my vacation residence and you can watch that video right here if you're interested in the three burner. It's very much the same, just a little smaller, okay? I'm not here to sell you a griddle. I'm not here to make money for Pit Boss. I'm here to pass on my knowledge of what I've learned not only watching the YouTube videos, but with my own personal experience working with this griddle. And you know that if I spent my money on it, uh, it's a good product. I've researched it quite a bit already. The price, pricing, pricing. Let's get into pricing. Pricing on the four burner ultimate griddle in Canada is $9.99 from the Pit Boss website. In America, it's $6.49, I believe. So in the price conversion, that would be $9.39 Canadian. 
So we're paying about $60 more for this here in Canada. It's very comparable. So anyways, as I leave, I'll just kind of leave you with a montage of some of the stuff I've cooked on this griddle. I hope I've brought enough information to you for you to make an informed decision on whether or not one of these griddles is right for you. Okay. I'm not here to sell this to you. I'm here to show you what I've learned from the videos and from using it for almost five months. If you got anything out of this video, I'd appreciate a like, maybe a subscribe, and down on the right hand side, there's a little bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. And as always, well, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching everybody.